Are you a new Minions Masters player who's taken a few too many cleavers to the face? Or maybe you're just looking for some tips to turn a few of those L's into W's. Or maybe you're just tired of that defeat sign. Well, if that's you, today we're in luck because we're going over our top 10 tips for new Minions Masters players. So let's get right into it with tip number one. Use mana wisely. One of the most important things in Minion Masters is the exchange in mana between you and your opponent. At the very core of this game, you want to be spending less mana than your opponent, when possible, to defeat their cards. Now, that may not always be possible, so the other thing that you want to be paying attention to is always getting a return on investment with your cards. This may mean things like not fireballing their tower and not killing any of their units, or maybe just doing some damage but not actually taking care of the unit altogether. There's a lot of different ways to do this though, so Pay attention to all the different ways that cards work and how they can help you. And in certain cases, you might find that not all cards are going to be able to help you the same way in that regard. Which brings us to tip number two. Play defense. Defense is one of the most important concepts in Minion Masters. The only way to survive in this game is to make sure your tower doesn't hit zero damage. So that means being able to take care of the push that your opponent has for you. There's a lot of different ways to do this as well, and a good defense can also be part of a strong offense. You can see in this case right here, I defeated their Troubadour, which is a big unit and going straight for my tower, and was able to send that into a couple of units going the other way. But even better, I was able to set up a second defense for their second part of the push and then turn that into a second counter push. This way, I was able to not only take care of their units coming my way, but then efficiently use it by sending them back the other direction. This is a good use of mana, and now I can spend that little bit of extra mana creating a stronger push that's going to be harder for them to deal with. I can take care of the units they place with a spell or two, and then get right into the tower with some good damage. The more that you're able to create advantages through your defense, the more likely it is that you're going to be able to play some offense. But be careful, your opponent's going to be playing defense too, so they'll be looking to stop your counter pushes. Which brings us to tip number three. Watch the bridges. The bridges are important because they're responsible for the EXP gain of your hero. You can see right here at the beginning of this match, I used a dual scrap pack split to grab both the bridges early on. It's really easily countered as you can see right there, but it's a nice strat to grab both the bridges. It's not the only one and I would experiment with the best early bridge play for you. The important thing is to continually watch them throughout the game so that you never fall behind. And if you can control them both, great, but it's probably not going to happen. So I would focus more on spending mana efficiently and making sure that your opponent doesn't control both bridges. If an opponent does control both bridges, that might be a good sign to start creating a push or build a counterattack on the side of the bridge that you want to get so that you can tip the scales in your favor and start getting some experience again for your hero. It's important not to let the experience get too far apart because if their hero levels up much faster and they have much stronger perks than you, it can really slow you down late game or even make it impossible to win in some cases. So watch the bridges and make sure that you have a strategy for how to keep up on them but not necessarily waste any mana keeping up on them. One of the other things that you're going to want to watch is there's a lot of bridge play throughout the game. Some cards are going to be able to attack the bridge or some of them are going to use the bridge to get experience or mana for your hero. And some of them uh, heroes even have abilities that are going to have effects with the bridge. So it's important for you to monitor what's available and what's going on and just watch for any weird shenanigans that you don't want to have happen to you that might be localized at the bridge. Now on to tip 4. Find the value. We're going to take a look at some cards now. Here, we're going to take a look at the Screaming Scrat. It's a really popular card in a lot of decks. You can see it packs a punch for just one mana, has a lot of abilities, it can taunt, it can run around really quickly, and it can blow up for 100 damage. Now, that 100 damage is a little hard to control and a bit unpredictable as you may not always get it, 
but 100 damage can actually defeat a lot of things stronger than it. You can see how that card can be used in a lot of different ways to create advantage, and that's one of the reasons why it's made its way into so many decks. There's a lot of different cards though that can create similar advantages for you, so it's important to go through the cards, figure out ones that give you a lot for how much they're costing you, and figure out which ones you like to play as well. We all play cards differently, and sometimes you just intuitively understand more of the mechanics of a card than others and can get more value out of it. There's also a lot of cards that act differently, so you have to figure out which cards are necessary for your deck and which ones you're going to have to kind of work your way around. And of course, there's a lot of different values to these cards, so we're going to need to pay attention to that as well. You can see with all the different cards we've looked at, they hit ground units, flyers, and in this case, even buildings. So it's important to know how these units act and how they work when putting your deck together. Which brings us into tip number five. Strike a balance. One of the most important things in this game is striking a balance between the mana costs in your cards. While some of these Bigger cards are really powerful, like being able to summon a new crossbow dude every 4.2 seconds. They're also a little bit more expensive, meaning they're vulnerable to cheaper counters. The important thing though is to build your deck around cards that are powerful, but can also be protected by some of your smaller minions. The Colossus here is a really good example. This is a very powerful card. It can kill tons of ground units, it has 1200 health, but a simple flyer can kill it, and that means it needs some sort of defense from some of your smaller minions to protect it. You also want to be looking for cards that counter or go with other cards well. Once you figure out which cards you like, you'll have an easier time figuring out what you want to spend your crystal shards on and the cards that you want to target. Which brings us to tip number six, factor your hero and level bonus. Each hero plays a little bit differently than the next. They also have different level bonuses, which means the way they play and the flow of the battle is going to be different depending on which hero you choose. This also means that their cards are going to interact a little bit differently with each hero. Some of them have synergies with different cards than others, and you're also going to want to factor that into your deck construction. As you can see, these moves come in a wide variety. They come from units, to spells, to tricks, and everything in between. And there's really some quite unique ones. For example, this one here, Tempers Flaring, gives all friendly melee units 50%. That's something that you want to build around if you're using that hero. Same thing with this, Best Buds. You're getting a free unit that is really strong and powerful. So if you can get your push to go along with that and the level 3 Terror Brutus, you can get a very powerful attack. Which takes us into our next tip. Tip number 7, have a clear win condition. There's a lot of cards in Minion Masters, but they don't necessarily all go well together. It's important to find cards that support each other, cover each other's weaknesses, and have synergy with each other. There's a lot of different ways to defeat your opponent. For example, you can do the have a big unit that marches straight for the building and have a lot of unit support strategy, or you can use a lot of flyers and have some spells that can support them, or have hordes of smaller units. It doesn't really matter what your win condition is, so long as you have a way to execute it and support those units, you'll be more successful. Tip number eight, place spells and units well. One of the ways that you can gain an advantage in Minion Masters is by getting proper placement of your spells and units. This way, you don't take damage that's unnecessary, and you can maximize the offensive benefits of your units. This is how you're going to gain mana advantage over your opponent throughout the game. With proper unit placement, you can protect units that are vulnerable giving you a better chance to survive on defense, while also getting to units that are causing you more trouble on the other end. One of the things that you're going to want to do is figure out what units your enemy is using and figure out the right rotation so that your cards are aligning with their cards. Getting the proper counter to the right situation is going to be a huge part of your success. And the better you are able to counter their attacks, 
the more successful you're going to be throughout your matches. And that brings us to tip 9, build your rotation to take advantage of your synergies. We talked a little bit just a moment ago about building your rotation to take advantage of the counters, also take advantage of your synergies. There are synergies all throughout the games, but here you can see I used my Crystal Golem, my free spell, which leveled it up, and then another spell to level it up all again. It's by design that all of those spells happened in that order. That way I'm getting the most out of my deck when I'm attacking. And that brings us to number 10, watch for big spell payoff. You can see right there, in desperation, my opponent had a seven mana spell all clumped up together, and I was able to use a four mana fireball to kill it. And then I finished it off with a spell. This was an opportunity for me to get a big payoff with a spell. So this takes me to my final note. Learn the cards. As you can see, there's a lot of cards in Minion Masters, and it's going to take a long time to play them all, as well as encounter them all. But the more you play with them, and the more you understand how they work, they move and interact, the sooner you're going to have an easier time countering them. And as you can see, there's a lot of cards that get used not only across multiple decks, but sometimes more than one time in a deck. So it's important to learn how to counter these in order to maximize your chance at winning. Hopefully you got some value out of this video. If you did, please like or subscribe and leave a comment below. I would love to hear from you. And thanks for watching.